what's up, Gabazila here. And yeah, last week Apple released the new iPhone 14 Pro and introduced a new interaction called Dynamic Isle. No need to say, Apple did it again, showing us how much user experience is so important in the design process by taking the front camera, face sensor, speaker, and turning it into an interactive Dynamic Isle. So in today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step step how to design and prototype an interactive Dynamic Island in Figma. Okay, so what you're seeing on my screen is an iPhone 14 Pro mockup I've downloaded from Figma community. If you want to download similar mockup, all you have to do is to go to Figma community, search for iPhone 14 Pro, and you'll be amazed how quickly great designers across the world are sharing iPhone 14 design files we can download and use in our projects. So once you got your mockup, let's begin with creating the dynamic island and we're going to use a music app for our example. Now we're gonna start at the end. What we're gonna do is create the last music player frame and work our way backwards to a simple dynamic island peel shape. Okay, the first thing I'll do is select the frame tool and draw a frame of 370 by 200 pixels. Let's add a fill, give it a black color, round the corners to 40 pixels and use the alignment tools to position it in the middle. <laughs> nice. To stay organized, let's give it a name, Dynamic Island. Next, I'm gonna click on the Resources tool, hit on Plugins, and open up the Loti Files plugin. Now, I already made a bunch of tutorials on Loti Files in Figma. I'll link them all down below in the description in case you want to check them out. Because we're prototyping a music app, I like to take it to the next level and make our sound wave interactive. So, in the Loti Files plugin, I'm gonna search for sound waves. I think this one is pretty cool. I'm gonna click on the background color and bring the opacity all the way down because I want the animation with a transparent background. And let's click on Convert to GIF to add it to Figma. I hold Shift on the keyboard, make this sound wave 40 by 40 pixels, and position it inside the dynamic island frame. Next, let's add a song cover on the left side. I'll click on the Shape tool and draw a rectangle of 64 by 64 pixels. Around the corners, hit on Fill and change the color from Solid to Image. And I'll choose this album cover by Billie Eilish. I've downloaded it from Google. I click on the text tool to add a song title, Happier than ever, position it, duplicate it one more time by hitting on Command D and position the artist name Billie Eilish under the song title. I'll give the artist text a gray color and make some position adjustments. Now let's quickly add player controls like play button, next and preview songs, and the track bar. Cool, so now before we prototype this, let's hit on the play button to preview it. And we can see we have a full dynamic island with a nice sound animation on the right side. Now, for our animation, we need to create two more frames. One frame with just an empty dynamic island, the second frame when the music player is working and showing on the dynamic island, and the last frame is the one we already created of the music player open. So, let's select the main frame and hit on Command D to duplicate it. And let's make adjustments to the music player frame. First, I select the player controls and the text and hide them. Let's select the album cover and the GIF and size them down to 28 by 28 pixels. I'll do the same for the frame. I'll size it down to 36 pixels height and 192 pixels width. Position the album cover and the GIF to the left right edges and align the whole frame to the middle. Also in this frame, I'll hide the mobile signal. Let's select the whole frame and duplicate it one more time. In this frame, I'll select the album cover and the GIF, click on the eye icon to hide them, make the dynamic island smaller to 122 pixels in width and align it to the middle. And in this frame, we can go ahead and bring back the mobile signal icon. Now for the fun part, let's prototype it. Let's go to the prototype tab, select the third frame and drag the plus icon to the second frame. I'll change the interaction from on click to after delay of 800 milliseconds. The animation I'll change to smart animate and I'll go all the way down and choose custom spring. The reason we're using custom spring is because we want to recreate our bouncy animation just like the real dynamic island. So I'll change the duration to 600 plus milliseconds. You can always hover over to preview the animation and play with the settings until you find something you like. I found 638 milliseconds works well for this example. Next, I'll select the dynamic island in the second frame and drag the plus icon to the first frame. I'll leave the interaction on click and keep the animation settings the way they are. In the first frame, I'll select the music player, drag the plus icon back to the second Second frame, I'll change the interaction to mouse leave so when the user is done interacting with the music player, the dynamic island will shrink back down. My friends, it's time to hit on the play button and interact with our prototype. So after a short delay, the dynamic island is in motion with the song playing, 
If we click on the dynamic island, it will expand. And if the mouse leaves the dynamic island, it will shrink back down. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I am very excited about the whole new possibilities the dynamic island will bring to the product design world. If you like videos like this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Make sure you follow my design work on Instagram. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.